show up in the party, flyer than everybody. We show up in the party, flyer than everybody. We show up in the party, flyer than everybody. We show up in the party, flyer than everybody. We show up in the party, flyer than everybody. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Carbon, and I am coming at you again with some more tips and tricks. Now, today's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be more about not how to get the easiest wins, it's how to get the most kills. And if you happen to get a win, that's awesome. It happens to follow. Now, I'm about to show you one trip tip right here. Do you see the way my arms fold in? And the second they fold in, I straighten myself back out. I start going level again to get my speed. Check that out. It's a great tip when you want to be the first one to get anywhere. The second you jump off that helicopter, you want to almost face down. But the second your arms touch the side of your body, straighten back out. Do not keep... Just because you keep aiming facing down and you're falling doesn't mean you're gaining more speed. You're going to keep that high speed by waiting for her arms to go straight down. Now guys, I am so excited to get into more of these tips with you. And I got a secret. At the end of this video, or maybe at some point in this video, I'm going to show you a website. Now this website is going to give you all the tips and tricks to finding everything you need in the game. Like all of it. And this is thanks to a specific person, and hopefully I can get to them in a second. Now, one of the first tips, besides jumping from the helicopter, is after you land. And when you get a gun, is you don't want to rapid fire at long distances. You just don't. And just like most of the tips that I'm going to mention here, and you're going to see in this video, and I'll let you know if they're in this video, is that they're like they are very important in the fact that it can get you the most kills not necessarily the win they can definitely help you with gun game and you know other small defenses now within this game you're gonna see some vehicles being destroyed with various equipment you're gonna see shields being implemented in ways most people wouldn't see them maybe you probably saw it from the beginning of the clip um, we're gonna talk about the best secondary weapon and possibly the best primary weapons and also how to use your perks and when to use your perks so I hope you guys are ready to get a little bit more into this I do have this gameplay behind here so I hope it does have a little bit of the visuals to the tips that I'm about to you know give you here so like I said you can destroy vehicles with various equipment and one of them is a trip bar. just as you can throw a grenade at vehicles and destroy them you can also use trip mines as well as shields just like you just saw me do there I put the shield down right as the car was coming he thought he was gonna kill me and the second I put it down it stopped him in his place and the shield actually caused damage to him eventually killing him there are many pieces of equipment to you know use against vehicles although people think they are safe when they're moving out in a vehicle I like I like to think of it as going fishing you don't always need a rocket launcher you know attract your your attention or attract their attention just keep shooting, do whatever you need to do, make them think you don't see him, make him pretend you're a noob or something. And then once they come at you, that's when you attack. Throw a nade at them, shoot a trip mine at them, put a shield down in front of you. Like, there's just so many defenses against vehicles, it's amazing. Now, as far as tap firing, like you guys have been seeing me do here, I am all I'm doing is tap firing at distances. That's all I'm doing. Tap firing is absolutely more accurate at distances than spraying. You can spray and pray all you want, but tap firing is going to get that accuracy up there. You want to tap, 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 tap. Now, there's actually certain mods you can buy for controllers that will actually have you when you hold down your fire button. It's not automatic. It'll actually tap fire for you. But, of course, when you're in those short range engagements like I was right there, you're going to want to use automatic. So that's why I think the assault rifle can be a great primary and secondary weapon. Now, of course, secondary weapons are great, but let's talk about the weapons while we're getting into it. Now, as far as your single shot weapons, I'd say your auger is your best bet as far as like between the SDM and the auger or and possibly if you want to add the burst like the ABR and the swordfish, I would always say the auger is your best way to go, but if you want to go automatic weapons, I would say use the ICR, the SWAT, or the or the rampart and just, you know, control that fire rate. Now as far as secondary, I would say if you're going for the most kills, do not use a sniper. Use a submachine gun over a sniper or use a shotgun over a sniper. It's really preference. Personally, I like the Spitfire. The Spitfire 
performs great at very close range and sometimes at medium range but typically um those guns are at 50 you know or at not 50 or at nine millimeters but the spitfire is at you know what, what is it called guys i'm stuck here <laughs> 45 caliber the spitfire is at 45 caliber which is a higher caliber than nine, nine millimeter and it sprays Hacker quick, alright? Some people don't even know how to... I don't even know if I can say hella, but I'm going to say it. It sprays hella quick, alright? Like, and it does so much damage. It doesn't give people time to react between... Sometimes if somebody shoots you with a MOG shotgun, by the time they shoot you again with the MOG shotgun, you could have already killed them with the Spitfires. That quick. I also like the SWAT. It is probably the best overall AR and rewards headshots in most scenarios. I, I definitely like the SWAT that has been released, and I definitely think you should be using the ELO site or the Red Dot site. And, you know, in some situations, carry a Red Dot site on the gun, and then carry, like, another site in your secondary, like a four times. Like, sometimes I do that as well. I just want to get those long shots. As long as you have long barrel on your AR, it's like having a sniper. It just takes, you know, a lot of bullets. <laughs> and then, as far as assault rifles, the KN is also great under 100 meters. And as well as the ramp part, you know, the ramp part and the vapor are, you know, good over 100 meters. That's why I recommended the ramp part because it shoots 762 over the vapors 556. I don't even know if I'm saying all that right. But yeah, the KN has, you know, 762 and that thing has damage, but it is great under 100 and the ramp part is great over 100. And as far as snipers, the Outlaw is definitely the best sniper to use as far as, you know, like fire per, fire per minute or. or rate per minute for rate of fire guys English isn't my best language today but as long as your opponent isn't sporting a trauma kit you know the outlaw can be a great weapon as long as it's headshots get those headshots with nothing's right. gonna beat that paladin now let's get in some new stuff here um, as far as where you should land now I do say bl um, firing range is definitely one of the best places you can land right now absolutely one of the best places I love it because it's right in the middle of the map I headset died again and it wasn't even 10 minutes in the video I can't figure it out man Astro 850 is their software but yeah let's get into the maps okay firing range definitely a great place to land I ain't gonna lie everybody knows it's in the middle most of the time you're in the safe zone and it's a great rotation and it's a great it's also great now that it's next to a zombie location because you can try to get everything done right towards the middle of the map it's freaking amazing but as we know this is the biggest map Call of Duty has ever made alright it is huge well, let's start out and talk about a couple of places. One of them is estates. I don't know if you guys like estates for getting the most kills, but for some reason, people think they're safe when they go to estates, and a lot of people have that mindset. So they go to estates, and they land there. And estates can be seen at the very top of the map, and it looks to be like two separate clusters of buildings separated by a trio of like converging roads. But now estate is the name of like the medium-sized multiplayer map in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, so it's also awesome to visit... Okay, you'll understand it as soon as you get there, so if you hear noises, you kind of understand where it's coming from. But a state, everybody who's a noob goes to a state thinking that they're going to be safe because it's on the edge of the map. It's amazing. The next one is obviously construction site, you know? Construction site is on the top left-hand corner of the map, or the northwest corner, depending on how you look at a map. But it is sandwiched between a main road and an ocean, and features one large building structure to loot. In terms of, like, links to previous games, construction site is a variation of, like, hard hat from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and like Collision from Call of Duty Ghost. You know, it's just an awesome location to drop and now you can get a pretty good view of Hijacked, which is the next place that you can land in. That is also a fan favorite. If you guys remember Hijacked from Black Ops 2 or Skyjacked from Black Ops 3, they brought it into Blackout and it is amazing and it is a great place to get kills but it's also boring once you get out of here because it's not a great place to rotate it just depends on if you want a lot of kills at the start or throughout the game it's really on you but as far as the next one i would say train station train station is a great place to land with the amount of loot all right it looks better than most of the other places and it sounds better because anybody who's running around on trains or on top of trains or in a building you can tell the difference you know, it's not like construction where people could be like a floor above you, two floor, three floor above you, below you. Like, it's hard to tell. But train station makes it absolutely easy, easy, easy. And next is Hydro Dam. I don't know if you guys know, but a lot of people do like to go to Hydro Dam and eventually make their way to Hydro Dam within the first, like, five minutes of the game if it's within the safe zone. Like, people, like once it's in there, everybody with vehicles 
just starts rushing in there. And Hydro Dam features some of like the largest indoor spaces on the entire map. And of course, you know there was a you know Call of Duty Black Ops 2, a map called Hydro that looks eerily similar to the layout here. And that's because this area, you know, is included in the Call of Duty Black Ops map. You know, pulls directly from Hydro and. That's why, you know, you gotta love this game. Like, everything is just, like, related to something. And, you know, I don't know how many guys you guys... How long you guys have been playing Call of Duty. But it's it's great to see all these things come back. But yeah, Fire Area, guys. She's dumb. Just, like, much like school and PUBG or Tilted Towers and Fortnite. It's no doubt gonna be an action pack. You know, kill ratio thanks to a high concentration of loot. And, you know, location. So, definitely, definitely... Keep an eye out when you land a firing range. I can't stress that one enough. But the next one I would possibly talk about, and this is thanks to Shroud and a couple of other uh, big players, is Rivertown. Okay, Rivertown looks to be like a flooded city environment of the map, and it's surrounded by water with a ton of small structures and clusters. So this means when people get there, more than likely, there's only three ways on and one way out on a building. So it's usually bridges. So once you're in there, you can get loot, get those trip mines, put them on the bridges, get those easy kills, put them within the right doorways underneath the windows so when people jump over, they get stuck in them. Like, these are just great, great, great tips with inside of Rivertown. Like, there's so much to do in Rivertown. It really is amazing. And I don't know if you guys know this, but there was a campaign mission called Old Rivertown in the original Call of Duty, so it's possible that there's like, there's like, there might be elements, you know? But let's talk about Asylum, alright? Asylum used to be a great place, I don't know if it still is, but just in case, Asylum is located in the drylands of sorts, and it has very little foliage, so that way it's easy to be seen, and it helps you, uh, it's one of the, the zombies maps from the old game, so it helps you see a lot better. Like, I don't know, it just, I like Asylum, people seem to go there because, you know, they want to kill the zombies. But yeah, guys, that is my tips. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Please leave that subscribe. I upload every single day. Leave that like. Leave that comment. And of course, I failed right here. And that's okay. My reason? Bad positioning. Alright, it really was bad positioning, guys. Alright, guys. I love you guys. Peace. Subscribe. Yay! Yeah.